Hey y'all, Mike here with Right Amanda Campy. Okay, so this video I'm building the carcass for the galley upper cabinet. And I'll just kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing. Which starts off with trying to measure everything and just trying to get an idea as to what the heck I'm going to do going forward. Alright, so after thinking long and hard about it, first thing I did was the obvious thing which was to put the back panel on the cabinet itself. Um, just simply cut down using the table saw and pocket hole joinery to create the wall that's going to be on the back of the cabinet, separating the um, cabin from the galley. Now, I've mentioned this on the blog and maybe in a previous video, but in the back galley I was actually building up everything by layers from bottom up. So I didn't even, um, for this wall, go all the way up to the ceiling because I knew I was going to be putting in some sort of rafter or support to help me later with the galley hatch as well. So once everything was dry fitted, I went ahead and I took it back to the um, workbench to go ahead and get the joinery put in that I was just going to use to drill this into the sides of the wall or into the sides of the camper. Um, the benefit of doing all of this as well is I kept feeling like it was making the walls a lot more sturdier and sturdier with all these supports in it too, which obviously with the roof rafters and everything in place it shouldn't be a huge concern, but it did feel nice to have those walls start getting stiffer and stiffer and not uh, shake as much when I touched them. Right, so once the pocket hole joinery was done, I was able to go ahead and get this thing mounted and installed. Um, sped up at 500%, you can just kind of see me dry fitting it, making sure everything fits, and then screwing it in. Um, yes, it is square. <laughs> I've been using a square here. I know in previous videos I said I don't pay that close attention, but no, I've been making sure everything's square, everything's good and solid, um, and everything's squared to each other. I do want to apologize because going forward I'll have the background music turned off as I was listening to music and I don't want YouTube to uh, slap me under wrist for copyrighted stuff. Alright, so with that back panel installed I was able to go ahead and start working on the dividers for inside the cabinet. Um, simple, just a half inch plywood that I ripped down on the table saw into pieces that were the length and height that I wanted them to be. So yeah, obviously once I had the uh, width cut out on the board um, or on the dividers at that point I was able to go ahead and cut them down to the depth that I wanted um, I'm still new to all of this so sometimes I don't think and I actually had initially planned to just use the fence to cut them and then I realized that would probably cause a massive kickback and I switched over to the miter gauge um, if you're following along and you're a newbie just kind of think about your cuts before moving on Okay, so once the once the dividers were cut, I was able to go ahead and get them prepped for mounting. Um, I'm again using pocket holes here, essentially just making sure that I have pocket holes going into the bottom as well as into the back, uh, which is all I'm marking out here. I like bottom and back, that just gives nice, sturdy 
wall supports for the cabinet. And just to go ahead and move along, I'll go ahead and speed this up to uh, 500 times, which, to be honest, makes me look kind of funny, doesn't it? Alright, so once the pocket holes were drilled, I was able to go ahead and get this mounted. Uh, again, it's just pocket holes with uh, pocket hole screws, nothing fancy. The other thing you do notice me doing though, um, well, maybe not quite as obvious as it should be, but I am pressing this hard against the wall because I do want this flush up against the wall. Um, I think you'll see this later as well, but you will notice that I'm actually drilling in a few holes from through the camper wall as well into this just to provide that little bit of extra support. Um, yeah, I've gone through probably more screws here than the big, big box stores usually carry. Now that I have the uh, cabinet dividers or the cabinet supports or whatever you want to call them in place, I can go ahead and cut down the top piece that's going to go on top of the cabinet. That's what you're going to see me do here. Uh, again, I'll go ahead and speed this up a little as well, just so this whole thing goes by a little faster for you. Unfortunately, I lost some footage, so the only thing you're going to see here is the finished product there. Um, but it is screwed in using pocket holes. The next step past this, and I'm going to be upfront, this is probably way overkill, but I ended up having an extra uh, 2x6 board that I had bought for uh, spars. So what I ended up doing is deciding, hey, I'm going to go ahead and use that board. I'm going to go ahead and use it as the backboard for the top shelf that's going to go on top of the cabinet. Plus, it's going to provide support for the galley hatch, as well as add some um, rigidity and stability to the walls themselves again as well. So that's what you see me measuring out and cutting down now. Again, probably way overboard, and it does add a couple of extra pounds to the trailer. But you know what? I'm not worried about my trailer falling apart at this point. So, hey, win-win. I'm sure if you're here, you already know how to measure stuff and how to cut it. Um, so I'll go ahead and speed this up as well. Just note, uh, one cool thing I did learn on the internet is to use a speed square as my straight edge for using a circular saw. That's kind of what you're seeing me use here for one of the first times. Now here you do see me dry fitting this into the uh, position that I wanted it to making sure it all fits before I do take it back to the table saw. I did go ahead and cut an angle on top of the board, just so it kind of match was, matched with the uh, curvature of the camper itself. So I just set the blade for whatever degree it seemed needed, and shot it through. Now, uh, this is just regular pine, but it does because it's, I guess it's so thick, um, it does take a little bit to cut through. So you do see me go pretty slow here. Um, but I do have to say this is a whole lot faster than trying to do this with a handsaw. And if I try to do this with a circular saw, I might as well just create waves. So once it was cut down to size, I got the holes pre-drilled in. Again, I'm using pocket hole screws to keep it in place and just drilled it in. Um, it was a bit of a pain to try and manage. You'll see me sometimes use uh, like a little crowbar just to kind of push it and move it into where I had 
to get it to go. But once it was in place, um, it, it's not moving. And honestly, I like the fact that it's not moving from anywhere. That has really added some massive um, stability to the camper. And yeah, I do realize that with this being full board the way it is, I do have to deal with some wood movement, shrinkage, and growth and all that. But there is a bit of space for it to actually grow towards underneath it, so I think we'll be okay. Plus, this board has been sitting around for quite a while. Um, also, since I am just drilling in these screws, sorry. Driving in the screws. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up, just uh, just to move along. Now, one other thing that this board did allow me to do was actually provide a little bit of extra um, support to the roof spar, that final one up there as well. So if you look up here, you can see the clamps that I used to uh, clamp together that roof spar and the um, that support beam, I guess is the best way to describe it. And then I just went ahead and I just uh, popped a couple of screws in. Um, this helped that, I don't know, it just helped that final spar to kind of stay nice and tight and just give me a nice flush trim for when I put the roof on later. You know what, this is a great segue into a little bit of a rant for me too. I'm new to woodworking. Um, I haven't done a lot of projects outside of building a couple of shelves here and there, uh, which is why you don't see me use a lot of joinery, which is why you see me maybe do things a little backwards from what you normally would do. This is a learning project and it's been a lot of fun for me. Um, so I'm glad to see that uh, it's it's finally coming along. Um, I am videos behind of where the camper is actually at and honestly it's it's fun just reviewing the camper, seeing where I've come, seeing what I've been doing, seeing the progress that I've made between this video and where the camper is actually at now and how much I've just learned. Uh, so what is my point in all of this? Um, if you're watching this video trying to figure out how to build your own camper, if you're out there worried about what you're going to end up doing, um, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're watching this already, you kind of have a basic idea as to skill level. You've already done projects with tools and stuff, so I'm going to be honest with you. If I can do this, you can do this. Um, if you start it, let me know. I'd like to follow along. Um, and of course, comment if you have any questions. Uh, I can't answer everything, but um, I can maybe point you to a couple people that will. In any case, uh, thank you so much for watching the video. If you found, found value in what I've been posting, please go ahead and subscribe and like the video. Uh, don't forget my blog at rightamountofcampy.net, which is a lot more up-to-date to where I'm currently at, as well as our Instagram at rightamountofcampy. Thanks again. See you next week.